Welcome back to Northbrook Ranch. I've had dairy goats since I was 13 years old and they're one of my favorite animals. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to milk, how to make goat cheese, and introducing you to some of my goats. I've had a lot of goat breeds in the last 17 years. Um, pretty much every breed of dairy goat and by far my very favorite has been Sonnen goats. There are a few things about Sonnens that are a little bit harder. Um, first, they eat a lot. They're a really large goat, and it's kind of hard to keep weight on them when they're milking. Also, um, their, their milk is not very high in butter fat, so it's not very rich and creamy. So in 2015, I had my very first kids of mini Sonnens, a Nigerian crossed with a Sonnen, and honestly, I found my goat breed. Mini Sonnens are a medium-sized goat. They have a high butter fat like the Nigerian. They have a high yield like a Sonnen, bigger teats, so they're a lot easier for hand milking. They have a super sweet personality just like the Sonnens, and they are also a thicker, hardier goat. The Nigerian dwarf goats are a really hardy goat and just overall healthy, and so they pass that into the uh, mini Sonnens as well. I've been working towards having a registered line of mini Sonnens and then also working on getting the best confirmation, um, utter attachment, and just overall appearance. This here is Hattie. Hattie is a two-year-old first freshener. That means this is the first time that she's had babies and is being milked. She is a mini Sonnen, but she is a colored mini Sonnen, which is referred to as a mini sable. So I'll start by washing her udder to get off any dust or dirt. I don't use a milk bucket like most people do. I actually prefer to milk into glass jars, and the reason is I can only have this much opening for dirt or dust won't get in as easily. And then I can just pop a lid on it, screw it on tight, and the milk is sealed and protected. If you've never milked a goat before, let me show you how it's done. You start by getting your hand right here. You actually have the teeth into um, the curve of your hand right here. You squeeze with your thumb and your forefinger and you squeeze off the milk and then you come down with the next fingers. So you can't just squeeze all your fingers at once. It has to be the first, the second, and the third. And that squeezes the milk right out. I've been hand milking for 17 years now. And it's actually one of my favorite things to do. It's very relaxing. Um, I have thought about getting a milking machine, but when it really comes down to it, I love the quiet, I love the hands-on time with my goats. So you always want to finish your goat out really well. You don't want there to still be milk in there, and it may seem like there will never be completely empty, and that's true to a point, but one thing that helps is to bump them a little bit, um, just like their babies would. See, now she's let down more milk than she had okay and then also I finish off with both hands on each tee just holding up here really empty so now there's like no milk coming out same over here and that was what I would call empty this is Lindy Lindy is a Nigerian dwarf goat so she is full grown she's only about 19 20 inches tall uh, weighs in probably between 50 and 60 pounds um, and this is a full growing dairy breed goat so they don't give a lot of milk but they have a really high butter fat so technically it's like drinking half and half it's so sweet and just so delicious so the one downside of the Nigerian goat breed is they're tiny which means their teats are tiny their milk production is also not very high so Lindy is a first freshener as well. First time having babies this year. She has learned how to be milked pretty well. She fought me a lot at the very beginning, but um, now she jumps up on the stanchion and she's happy to get milked. So 
technically I am using two fingers to melt her. Um, her teeth will get bigger as she gets older and she's had babies more times and been in milk for longer. When you're hand milking, you have to build the muscles and so you'll actually spend a lot of time with your hands hurting like crazy. But once you have those muscles built, um, it's not hard anymore at all. For a little bit and that makes the milk come down. That's a natural reaction um, because when the kids nurse they butt and that makes the milk come down. Okay. This here is Harper. Harper is one of my mini Sonnens that I'm the most excited about. Her mama is one of my very favorite goats, Haley. She is a first freshener, two year old, had her first babies this spring, and she is registered mini Sonnen. She has a beautiful udder, beautiful attachment that's gonna last a lot of years. She has nice, easy to melt teats but a really good size for her first time. And she's just the sweetest goat. Harper had twin boys this spring in um, February and after they were ready to wean, which I wean about three months of age, um, I found them a really sweet pet home, and then I began milking her. She also was very easy to start milking. She's just a really sweet goat. She's um, very friendly, very calm. So she never kicked um, or fought me, and it was just really easy to teach her how to be milked. She's also the first one on the milk stand most every single day. So goats always give more their second and third times having babies. The very first time they give the least amount just because they haven't milked before. She's had a pretty good production already this year so I'm really excited to see what she does. Her mom is a Sonnen and she milks over a gallon a day. This is Haley. Haley is actually my very favorite goat. She is a little bit older now. She's a seven. She doesn't have a whole lot of years um, left milking. Most of the time, milk goats only milk for held there about 10 or so maybe, if that long. Haley is a purebred Sonnen, so she's a really large goat, as you can see. She probably weighs in about 150 or so pounds. Haley is really special. She has a pretty amazing story. She actually adopted and raised an orphan baby horse, which I will share more on that later. It was just an incredible story to be a part of. So as you can see, Haley has really nice size handles. She's very, very easy to milk. She milks about a gallon a day, um, and she milked more when she was younger, but now that she's getting older, her production has gone down a little bit but she still has like a beautiful attachment and udder even at this age, which is something um, in dairy animals, dairy cows, dairy goats, you want to have um, the genetics for a long, healthy, productive life in their udders, their legs, their feet. This is Harrison. Harrison was a bottle baby, so he is here saying, I'm hungry, I want some milk. I don't care that I'm too big for milk anymore. I still want it. No, get out of here, you yeah. amp. He thought he'd grab it right out of the teat before it hit the jar. Harrison, go eat some pig. This is Heartland. Heartland is also one of my absolute favorite goats. Her mama was hands down my absolute favorite goat I've ever had. Her name was Heidi. 
and I had her for eight years. So Heartland is a mini sauna as well. She is also really, really sweet and uh, just has an amazing personality. So another trick that I have for raising goats and it's a little bit worn out here, but she has tape on her teeth. The reason is, is because this is a way to wean your baby goats without having to separate them. So if you're keeping a baby goat, you have to wean it when they get to the right age, if you want to milk. And so if you separate them, mama and baby spend pretty much all day, several days screaming their heads off. And so that isn't easy for the mama isn't easy for the baby and it's definitely not easy for you to have to listen so the tape is a way to keep the mamas and the babies together um, babies will get down here to nurse and say what in the world is that i can't nurse with that on and they're stopped and then um, eventually they both the moms and the babies will learn not to nurse this is sophie sophie is a nubian goat and you'll notice the very first thing that's different about these goats are the ears. So Nubian goats are from Nubia and they have this characteristic of really large sized um, pendulous ears. They have Roman noses. They are also a milk goat and a very, very nice milk goat. They actually have the highest butter fat other than the Nigerian. And she says, don't nurse right now. Um, they're really sweet goats. They're beautiful, but they are also known for being some of the loudest goats that there are. So this is Silver. He's a little black kid. And this is, this is Silver Belle. Silver Belle's a little girl. And she is what's called a blue roan. So as you can see, she's got a really beautiful color. They are about a month old now. Sophie is a three-year-old. This is her second time having babies. She has a little bit of milk that her babies haven't drank, and since I'm gonna be making cheese today, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. She's really easy to melt. She has really nice sized heat, and the milk flows out incredibly. So I'm excited to have her as a milk coat. going to do is we're going to strain the milk. Um, I have here a milk filter that is made for straining milk. This will get out any hairs or, or anything else that got in there. So we have one and a half gallons of milk here, and then I am going to keep the Nigerian milk separate right now. You do want to get milk into the fridge and chilling as fast as possible. That helps with the flavor. make warm milk into cheese like this or you can chill it and use cold we're gonna be heating it on the stove anyhow so it doesn't make a difference I don't have the time right now I've got to finish my chores and so I'm gonna put it into the refrigerator
Our family's favorite kind of cheese is a chef, which is a soft goat cheese. Okay, now that we're at the right temperature, I'm going to be adding a cup of plain um, live culture yogurt, which is going to be my starter. You can order a cheese starter online, but um, you can pick up yogurt at any grocery store and it looks the same. Now I'm gonna let that sit for an hour to culture. Our hour is up and it's time to add the rennet. I'm going to use, be using one quarter teaspoon of vegetable based rennet. Stir that in really fast and then stop moving it and then it takes about five to ten minutes to set up. The curds are all set now so it's time to cut the cheese. At this point I always like to turn the heat back on and let it warm up again as it makes the curds um, stronger and separate faster. Now that I got a lot of the way out of there, I'm going to move the curds into the colander. Now that most of the whey is drained out, I'm going to salt the cheese.
and then I'm gonna be putting it into a cheesecloth to drain overnight. Now we're gonna be making some ricotta cheese out of the whey. We're gonna start by heating the whey back up to 190 degrees. All right, we're to 190 degrees. I've been stirring it pretty consistently the whole time so that it didn't burn or boil over. Now we're gonna be adding vinegar. 